It's it's Russia against the world. How long can you withstand this? No, no, no. It's it's, it's, it's not. Again, it's a very uh, one-sided perspective. Is it NATO or what is it? The expansion of NATO? Expansion of NATO is a threat, an existential threat to us. So what's happening between uh, Kenya and Russia now? Uh, until now, everything was going uh, quite well. Until the sanctions. Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed. A special military operation. The rest of Europe calls it an invasion, an outright war. Even recently, U.S. President Joe Biden called it, um, some of the incidents going on there, um, genocide. So what's really going on between Russia and the Ukraine? Joining us live in the studio is Russian Federation Ambassador to Kenya, Dmitry Maksimichev. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to Hot 96. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. So you heard that. Uh, Russia calls it a special military operation. The pictures we see, the stories being told, it looks like outright war. Uh, it's not correct uh, because the, uh, it is a special military operation which is very limited uh, and um, the force that is being used uh, for uh, carrying it out is uh, very limited and uh, the, the goals of the operation are uh, the following. It is um, first demilitarization of Ukraine. Uh, second, denazification of Ukraine. Uh, third, it is uh, uh, the cessation uh, of uh, the extermination of the people of the Lugansk uh, and uh, Donetsk republics, people's republics. And also it is uh, the uh, the securing uh, of uh, the Russian security interests. Uh, I'm sorry for this expression, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, so um, uh, these are these are the goals that have to be achieved. They will be achieved, and uh, uh, it will enable Ukraine uh, to live. Uh, at peace with itself. But let me ask you this, Mr. Ambassador. Even the United Nations Security Council said that Russia unjustly invaded Ukraine. Uh, the Security Council didn't say that because uh, the Security Council speaks in resolutions uh, of the Security Council, and the security and we are a permanent member of the Security Council mm. with a veto power, so uh, it could not say anything like this uh, and um, but we obviously disagree with this well, okay if someone was to ask you what is the genesis of, oh. of this conflict when the soviet union uh, disintegrated or decided to separate uh, the separation went on peacefully and orderly and uh, but uh, after after it uh, the some outside forces uh, actually decided to use Ukraine uh, as a ram against uh, Russia. When you say outside forces, what do you mean? I mean NATO, US, EU, all those guys. Yeah, but Ukraine is not part of NATO, and maybe that's Russia's biggest fear, is Ukraine <sighs> joining NATO. That's a concern, of course, uh, but even being outside NATO, it can be exploited militarily. Uh, and uh, this is what, what was happening, uh, in fact, until very recently. Uh, and uh, coming back uh, to uh, to the exploitation, to actually to provide the ideological uh, justification for this, uh, uh, it, efforts were made uh, to create an ideology which would be totally different or totally hostile to Russia. And the only ideology they could think of was the ideology of uh, the Nazi collaborators of uh, the Second World War time, uh, who operated uh, 
I mean, Ukrainian collaborators who co collaborated uh, with uh, the Nazi occupation troops and uh, who participated in the Holocaust, in the extermination and the genocide of Jews, uh, gypsies, uh, Belarusians, Russians, Ukrainians as well. Uh, so nothing could be farther from uh, an acceptable ideology for, for Russia. And this gradually, this ideology was uh, implanted uh, into, into Ukraine. It is tragic. It is tragic, I admit. But uh, it actually now, it has permeated uh, the armed forces and other services uh, and... Uh, when I say Nazi, I mean Nazi because they are tattooing swastikas on their bodies. Uh, they are... Uh, uh, but we never see that in the news. We never see that in, on social... No, no, of course, not in the Western uh, information bubble uh, because everything is being purged, all this kind of information. So you're, uh, you're saying that we, we are not reporting the truth? No, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking about you, I'm speaking in about... In general, in general. Uh, I'm speaking about the Western propaganda machine, of course. Uh, and uh, they are not reporting the truth, or at least they are not reporting uh, the whole truth, uh, which is, again, very, uh, very sad. Uh, but, uh, just, uh, for example, you know, one of the slogans uh, of the Ukrainian neo-Nazis or Nazis is uh, Ukraine above all, which is a literal translation uh, from uh, the, the German Nazi Deutschland über alles. And uh, they are using it, they are sh chanting it on the streets. And also uh, another uh, slogan is uh, uh, glory to the nation and death to the enemies, which doesn't sound exactly inclusive or uh, tolerant. Yeah, but to, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Ambassador, when you see more than four and a half million Ukrainians fleeing their country, going across the borders, you know, in Poland, from Hungary, as far as Germany, and even the UK. And uh, Russia. And Russia, too. It's so sad. It's, yes, it's it so is. Sad. It is sad. And, and the bombardment of cities, you know, in Kiev and Lviv and uh, again, Mariupol. Again, uh, I'm telling things uh, that are difficult to believe uh, for you, uh, Jeff, Nick, and pro probably uh, for your listeners, because... Uh, the, the media environment is totally dominated by the Western uh, media uh, and propaganda machine. Uh, so, uh, on, uh, on the refugees, uh, we have been, uh, since the war uh, in Ukraine, and nobody knows about it inside the bubble, uh, is, um, has been... Uh, waged by the Kyiv regime against the eastern, uh, uh, eastern Ukrainian uh, republics uh, since uh, uh, 2014. Since then, uh, we have re received about 4 million uh, refugees from different parts of Ukraine. Some of them stayed, some of them moved back. Uh, now, after the beginning of the special military operation, uh, now we have about a million refugees who come to Russia. Uh, probably more would have come, but uh, the Kyiv regime, uh, they are uh, deliberately preventing people from going to Russia. And uh, the official explanation uh, for this is uh, who, would, who would want to go to Russia. It's unnatural for a Ukrainian, which is a lie. Uh, so uh, we hope that... Uh, in the end, things will happen, uh, will settle, uh, and people will be able to come back yeah. uh, to so, their homes. Mm. On the on the on the destruction of the cities, um, to a large extent, it is also uh, it is um, the result of the tactics. Uh, I would call it ISIS tactics uh, that the Ukrainian military are using. Uh, because, for example, they take their tanks, they are not uh, fighting in, in the open fields, they are not sparing their own population. 
they are Nazis. Uh, and uh, they are taking deliberately their heavy artillery, armor, and uh, the troops inside the residential areas to uh, maximize uh, the civilian casualties. That makes for our troop, that makes uh, the, the fighting very difficult because we are observing and respecting the international humanitarian law. And um, on several occasions, we proposed to them uh, to open humanitarian corridors for the civilians to leave. But uh, most of the time, they just refuse. It's your word against theirs, Mr. Ambassador, because they're saying they're, they're trying to get humanitarian corridors. Exactly. And they're saying Russia's refusing. Are you saying they're using their own people as human shields? Exactly, sir. Exactly. This is something I was going to say. This is the ISIS tactic tactics and uh, they place their uh, machine guns or uh, rpgs rocket propelled grenades uh, and so on in uh, the higher stories of residential buildings and they fire from there and they wait uh, for the response <laughs> to arrive uh, hoping that more people will be uh, will be dead uh, they are protecting them and they they said it they said it to the civilians there are miles of footage of people who managed to to get out of the cities uh, who actually are telling their stories uh, saying that they were prevented they were shot at uh, while trying to leave uh, the city but w okay let's, let's you say then that, that means like the government is because uh, you know when they said all the civilians will come to repel the russian attack was this like their strategy to make you know the world have sympathy on them or this is part uh this is part of their strategy they uh actually it's, uh, th that part the what they call the territorial defense uh is it actually backfired because they distributed I think in the first days of the operation, uh, they distributed around 30,000 assault rifles, the Kalashnikovs, yes. to anyone who would take them without even registering, without even training, uh, <laughs> without training, even without write, writing down their names. They were given uh, uh, rifles and uh, uh, ammunition to anyone who would take them. And then what happened? Uh, those. And they released also the criminals, the convicts from prisons, on the promise uh, that they would fight uh, the Russians. What happened? People took the guns and took to the next shop to 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 rob it, to and they shot uh, uh, and they shot each other, and they shot civilians. Are you surprised at the reaction of the Ukrainians? You know, because um, a lot of experts, so-called experts, said this special military operation would take just weeks. And look where we are now, uh, More than, almost two months later. Exactly. First, uh, neither the Russian government nor the Russian military has ever, ever mentioned uh, any deadlines uh, for the operation. Uh, the goals, as I explained, were set. But uh, it was again uh, from the other side, uh, from the other side of the propaganda that we heard it will take 70 uh, pentagon said uh, it would take 72 hours for the russian army to uh, to get uh, to take kiev we never said that uh, when uh, when after 72 hours they said okay the blitzkrieg uh, is stopped is stalled uh, but it's a Basically, it's um, a discussion within themselves. They are uh, arguing with themselves. We do not uh, set any deadlines for, for the operation. Second, I also mentioned this. The operation is slow because we have to fight a very uh, specific and a very peculiar, not peculiar, but dangerous um, uh, adversary in the sense uh, that they are trying to maximize uh, the casualties uh, and uh, what the American calls the uh, collateral damage. And we are trying to minimize it. If we went, like the Americans, in Mosul, for example, or in Raqqa, uh, we could have bombed uh, the entire country within a matter of days uh, and raised uh, cities to the ground. 
just like they did in Raqqa or uh, in Mosul or in Baghdad. Yes. We don't do that. It's against our principles. Uh, and uh, so uh, we, f for us, it is unacceptable. That's why we spend more time. We lose, tragically, we lose more people, more men. But at the same time, we are minimizing uh, civilian casualties and we are giving the chance uh, to the Ukrainian side to think again. Yeah, there's a fear, Mr. Ambassador, that this could escalate. It could get worse as time goes on. Oh, uh, it could. Uh, well, uh, yes, in a conflict like this, uh, things can happen. Uh, but uh, yes, it could accelerate as well. Uh, because there are, I'm not privy to the the plans uh, of uh, the Russian military, uh, but um, apparently now there is a big 100,000 uh, men are assembled in the east of Ukraine, fully armed, very well entrenched. They've got, uh, they built a kind of a marginal line. Uh, and uh, so, and they are still there, and they are still shelling the cities of Lugansk and uh, Donetsk. And uh, so, apparently, something has to be. They are not surrendering. They are not negotiating uh, with us. So, apparently, something will have to be done with them, if they, or at least to convince them to lay down the arms. But it's about the humanitarian disaster that's unfolded. I mean, it's, it's, it's catastrophic, you must admit. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it is, it is a very tragic situation and uh, humanita in humanitarian uh, terms. However, it, well, if you compare it with uh, the other conflicts that we had, to Syria, to Libya, to uh, Iraq, to Yugoslavia, well, uh, still, it is, uh, I should say, uh, un until this point, uh, well, of course, every human life lost, life lost uh, is a tra tragedy for everyone, for us too. Yes. However, it is not the worst of the of disasters that uh, has ever happened uh, in history, no. And then, you know, I've noticed, uh, or what's been happening is also the, the sanctions that are coming from, you know, Western media and brands and countries. Yes. Uh, is there a way you're resolving that or you're just letting it be because you hear... Uh, businessmen having their products boycotted, which I know also affects Russia and the world. Uh, well, yes. And there has been another war uh, that is uh, uh, being waged against us uh, by NATO, by EU, by the US, by Japan. Um, and that is uh, economic war yeah. and uh, illegal sanctions and uh, um, unilateral sanctions. It is uh, they. It is uh, the, this, all this. The system of sanctions is aimed at preventing us uh, uh, from developing, from living. Basically, uh, it is not really. If I, well, well, let me tell you what they did. Uh, first, they stole our money. Uh, our uh, sovereign uh, reserves that were kept in Western banks. They just took it and say, okay, it's not yours anymore, it's ours. Uh, fine, then uh, they, uh, they tried to, c they cut us uh, from this interbank uh, system called SWIFT. Yes. Uh, second, uh, they uh, uh, have prevented us from using their currencies like uh, the dollars or euros or uh, whatever because all these transactions have to go through uh, their banks mm. and everything will be stopped uh, they cut our access to insurance uh, to the logistics everything they tried everything so far it has not worked very well we are resisting, we are trying to find ways to, to resist and to continue to exist, uh, but their intentions, the intention is that, is actually strangle us. And again, steal the money. 
that will, uh, I mean, leave us with no money and no commodity, which is a totally unacceptable si uh, situation for us. They also fear that you might shut off the gas. Uh, they might shut, shut it off themselves because we are explaining uh, in order to prevent you guys from stealing our money, please pay us in rubles because you can't steal our rubles. You first buy the rubles somewhere and we will tell you where and how and then pay us in rubles and you will get as much gas as you want. Uh, they are still hesitating. A couple of European countries have said, yes, it's fine, we can pay in rubles, no problem. But the European Commission and uh, some others, they are saying, no, the sanctions are intended to hurt Russia, not to benefit it. I think yeah. it's great logic behind this. Mr. Ambassador, I think you, the biggest challenge that Russia has, is it NATO or what is it? The expansion of NATO? Uh, it is a complex uh, threat, I should say. Expansion of NATO is a threat, an existential threat to us. But, and that's why we proposed we have been proposing to sit down and discuss it for the last 30 years after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Uh, but uh, they never wanted to, to listen to us. And there has been, there have been five ways of uh, eastward expansion of NATO since uh, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. We have dissolved the Warsaw Pact. Uh, the and we hoped that in return we would get a little bit of uh, at least understanding. But they took advantage of the situation and they continued to move their infra military, military infrastructure towards our borders. Now, over the last few years we have noticed that there were more and more uh, NATO or uh, um, um, American or English uh, uh, exercises and maneuvers in the territory of, uh, of Ukraine. And this is literally at our doorstep. Uh, the weapons are becoming more sophisticated, more and more we uh, weapons are being, have been pumped into, stuffed, I would say, into Ukraine. And so, and we were trying to actually to, to discuss this with our partners in NATO and uh, uh, and the latest proposal came in late October, if I'm not mistaken, by President Putin. He said, okay, uh, that's enough. Let's sit down and discuss the, the new security, uh, the new security architecture in Europe so that we uh, can uh, actually accommodate each other uh, so that we can live uh, and uh, cooperate and prosper together. They refused. Instead, they accelerated the uh, supplies of uh, weapons to Ukraine. The main uh, thing was to establish direct dialogue between the Kyiv uh, authorities and the authorities of uh, the uh, republics. Mr. Ambassador, can we talk about Russia's relationship with Kenya? I know yes. we export everything from tea to flowers to Russia. Fruits. And fruits. And, and vegetables. Correct. And we import everything from what? Wheat to steel? Yes, and construction materials. Correct. And... Uh, and fertilizers. Yeah, fertilizer, fertilizers, very important, yes. yes. So what's happening between uh, Kenya and Russia now? Uh, so, uh, I mean, until now, everything was going uh, quite well, I should say. Trade was growing, uh, it was diversifying, uh, and uh, also last year it grew by 12 point uh, something percent, which is not bad for an uh, after epidemic uh, year. Uh, then uh, what what is really inspiring is that uh, Kenya started selling more uh, product, more of uh, the Kenyan produce to Russia. That means uh, the trade became more uh, more balanced, uh, and uh, 
so uh, the growth of Kenyan exports to Russia last year was 60%. And we were very happy until the sanctions. Uh, well, we did not create this situation. Uh, the, as they say, it, it is uh, not, uh, when they say it is a war of choice, no. It has never been. It, it is not because it was, uh, we were in fact provoked into uh, starting this operation. Yes. And then the sanctions came. And as I explained, how can we uh, trade if we don't access to money, if we don't access to the payment mechanisms, if we don't access to interbank payment, modern pay payment mechanism, if we don't access to uh, if our shippers are being ostracized and uh, uh, by uh, uh, by the West, uh, and uh, they are targeted in the sanctions, because, for example, they are uh, uh, isolated from uh, the navigation systems, and we got without the, the modern navigation systems, uh, you you cannot ensure. Uh, your ship and your cargo, mm -hmm. and uh, they are uh, they introduced a ban on our ships entering their ports, and so it is a whole uh, a whole system of sanctions that actually uh, hinders uh, the the development of our cooperation. Mr. Ambassador, as powerful as Russia is, and we yes. know you're powerful, but it looks like the entire world is choking you off. It's it's Russia against the world. How no, long can you withstand this? No, no, no. It's it's, it's, it's not. Again, it's a very uh, one-sided perspective, uh, because, well, we cooperate with China, we cooperate with uh, India, uh, we are happy to cooperate with Africa, uh, and even if you look at the votes in the in the General Assembly, uh, I mean half, or I mean the bigger the the larger part of the world population is not against us uh, it is only the west uh, it's western europe uh, well uh, us and uh, also like new zealand australia canada this kind of uh, people and uh, so uh, you uh, and they tend to be so uh, egocentric uh, because they uh, speak of themselves in third person and say uh, the whole world is uh, not, you are not the whole world. The whole world is much bigger and uh, much uh, freer and uh, also much more diverse than you think. So uh, it is not a matter of being isolated from the world. Uh, it's a matter of being isolated from very powerful countries, economically, politically and military. Militarily, but again, it, it's not our choice. We are always open to negotiations and to any kind of settlement. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, a distant light, uh, because really, uh, <laughs> well, it is a it is a dialectical, a very dynamic situation, because everything depends on everything. Uh, so on. Uh, um, it is a very complex uh, system that we are having, uh, we, are, uh, we are in now, globally, together with you. And I hope that we will soon, we will find a way, together with Kenya uh, and other African states, uh, we will find a way to continue our cooperation, because it's not about us. And they say, yeah, it's about uh, hunger and famine will come because of Russia. No, mm. we are there. We still produce as much uh, food as we used to. We are not even preventing Ukraine from exporting uh, their produce because uh, they are big producers of grain. They are big producers of oil, uh, vegetable oil, uh, sunflower oil. Excellent, by the way. And uh, so... Uh, we are not preventing them. It is them who mine, uh, who lay mines uh, in their own fields. In uh, the areas controlled by Russia, we demine these fields and we actually <laughs> help those people to plant.